Hello, physics. This is Mr. Fumato with an introduction to Video Physics, the app. So open Video Physics, and you'll see in the upper left a little plus sign, and I want you to choose the sample video that says Segway. Segway. So here we have a video of a person accelerating from rest and then moves from left to right on a Segway. And what we're going to do is we're going to track the motion of this uh, device in uh, video physics using this um, sort of crosshair thing. So what I'd like you to do is put the crosshair right on the little dot at the center of the wheel, and then I want you to use the slider here to really zoom in on that guy on the center axle of the wheel, get it nice and centered, and then just press at the... Um, somewhere in the circle and you'll see a red dot appeared. So that's one of our data points. You'll also notice that every time you press the video it is advancing one frame. So I'm going to press a bunch of times and then as soon as this guy starts moving you'll see that the axle itself starts to move and I want you to track that. So you, as the Segway moves it's your job to track the point okay and each time you click a data point or enter a data point the frame will auto, the video will automatically advance one frame. Now, what what you are essentially recording into the computer is the the location of these pixels and the time associated with each video frame. So we're essentially generating a position versus time graph. Now, as we get to the end here, what we're going to see is that these dots start to get farther and farther apart, and that is clear evidence that acceleration is occurring. And we'll talk about that in class. But what I want to point out here is that this video doesn't make a whole lot of sense until you calibrate a distance in the video frame. Okay? So what I mean by that is that really all the computer knows right now is, the, is where on the screen these red dots are in terms of pixels. But the computer doesn't know anything about what's happening in the video. So... I want you to click the screen outside of that little data thing, and, and I want you to rewind it to the beginning. And now we're going to say uh, on the top here where it says experiment two, instead of saying points, I want you to click origin and scale. So you'll see that we have a nice x, y origin. So we're going to put the origin right at the axle. And then this little guy is essentially a ruler, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a um, a distance in the video frame, okay, and I really want you to be careful in your thinking here. You have to pick something in the, in the dimension, the linear dimension of this uh, object's movement. If you pick something far in the back, like the door, you know, because the door is farther back, it might be the same length uh, as things that are up front, but it'll look smaller. So you'll notice that on the ground here, they've put a meter stick, and I'm going to define one end of the meter, let me move my origin out of the way, one end of my meter stick right there super carefully, the other end of my meter stick right there super carefully, and then you'll see up here it says what is that number of pixels, so apparently 268 pixels is equal to 1.0, and then the unit next to it is meters. So let's say done, put our origin here, okay. All right, now let's watch our data go by, all right. Sorry, I'm going to go back to points. Watch our data go by. And then lastly, I'd like for you to look in the upper right-hand corner. There's a little thing that looks like a graph with a jagged line. Let's click that. And I'd like to step you through the different graphs that are available. So this first one, you'll see that the vertical axis is Y and the, the horizontal axis is X. This graph has no meaning to us. Swipe right. Now, these two graphs do have meaning to us. This top one is the horizontal x position as a function of time for every little dot that I put on the screen. Now that's a data that's a data graph that we, we will discuss. Below is the x velocity for my uh, guy on the segue over time and we'll discuss that in class. So this these sets of graphs are important. This next set of graphs, these are the y variation. We don't care about the vertical movement in this case. So it's really just these two that we're interested in. And what we can do is we can share this 
as a video, as a video with points, as a graphical analysis file, which is another app that we're going to be using uh, a lot of. But this is a general overview to the how to um, generate data in video physics. Here's a really nice example of how to hold the camera perfectly vertical to make your own video. The brick's got it really solid. Here's an example of how to hold the camera totally horizontal. Use a table. Don't let the camera wiggle at all. That's going to mess up your video. Okay, so now we're going to do our own video analysis. So we say choose existing, and we look at the videos in our library, and we say, hmm, what looks good? Check out this one. Now, that one ran over the ruler. I don't like, I don't like that one. How about this one? Nope, it hit the ruler and changed my calibration. Can't do that. Hmm. Yeah, I think this guy is pretty good. All right. When you make your own video, you have to bear in mind that uh, the way you do the analysis is going to determine its usefulness. Okay, first, we're going to set our scale. This is a 30 centimeter distance. You can just read it right off of your ruler. 30 centimeters. Make sure you get the units right. Then we're going to, I'm going to put my origin. Let me see where the car comes in. I'm going to scroll forward frame by frame. And uh, let's see, the car is about to come in, right about here. So I guess I'll make my origin over there. All right, and I, I kind of want the, um, let's see, I, I, I kind of want the car and the axis to go along the same line. So I'm just gonna, I notice that my car takes a little bit of a turn here. So I'm gonna actually kind of just tilt my axis down a smidge to try and get it roughly straight like that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, generally speaking, for one-dimensional motion, we want to try to have it be exactly one-dimensional, but, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's see here. I'm going to take my car, and I'm going to start entering the data here. So I click the thing that says points, and I bring my, my data point tracker. I'm going to pick the very nose of the car. I'm going to make my little um, circle pretty small, and then I tap to enter a point, and then it automatically advances one frame. And I just try to do my best to see the very same place on the car at each frame. All right, now, after we're done with this, we're going to take a look at our data. The question is, what's happening in this, uh, what, what data are we generating? We're generating, in essence, the X and Y location of each pixel as a function of the time stamp on the video frame, but because we've, we've calibrated the pixels to the length on the ruler, the computer is going to report the distances along x and y as a function of time. Now, this is a one-dimensional motion almost, and so we're not really concerned about the vertical movement, the y movement. We're really just interested in the uh, X movement. So you click the screen outside of the data thing and you go to the graphs. Actually, let, let's take a look. I just want to see what this looks like from start to finish. It's kind of nice to, uh, oh, look at that. Doesn't that look, it's always satisfying to see the data points match up so nicely with the movement. And then we go to the graphs and we say, here's my Y data, don't care. Ooh, look at that nice X data. All right, and you'll notice that it's going along the negative X axis, which we can deal with, all right? When we, when we send this data out to graphical analysis, we'll have some interesting discussions about uh, how to um, interpret this data. All right, thanks for watching.